I'd like to talk about um, uh, Jesus, what he's done. Who, who has never heard me before? Okay, okay, almost half, so right. Okay, well, I've got some good news. <laughs> um, Christianity, as we call it, has been uh, framed up for you, okay? And what you walk into when you get saved or when you, you belong to a family that goes to church, Christianity, Jesus, and lots of terms get framed up for you very quickly. And then that becomes your grid. Every time you read it, every time you hear it, its parameters, its meanings, its consequences have been set for you. And then <laughs> there's the truth. And you've got to take this thing that's made lots of agreements and understandings and maybe invested very heavily in a certain understanding of Christianity and walk it through to what was really given to you. The very person and nature of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which is what you are. You are everything that he is, you're nothing that he's not. And everything the Bible says of Jesus, it says of you. Because when you were born again, you were born again the same way he was born. A seed came from above, went through the Holy Spirit, hovering over the waters, hovering over Mary, hovering over you, and rebirthed you as a new being, fully God, fully man. So what Jesus is, he's the start of a new race, fully God, fully man race. And that's what you are. In your nature, your nature has changed. Your DNA has changed. You now inherit different things. Before you were under first Adam, and everything that's his is yours. Separation, disappointment, Sickness, death, frustration, miscommunication, accusation, it's yours. By the sweat of your brow, you'll fight for a living. And you died to that, and you rose again, a different being, a second Adam. And everything that's his is now yours. It just comes to you. <laughs> you can clap that, yeah, that's good, yeah. <laughs> Effortless, divine unity. You are now in the fourth part of the Trinity. Not being clever, you are. You're one spirit with Jesus Christ, and everything that is his is yours. Absolute delight of the Father. His salvation is yours. His righteousness is yours. His holiness is yours. You have holiness, you have Jesus Christ. Here's your holiness. That's what Corinthians says. And Jesus is holy, 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 so you are Holy, holy, holy. You just have to accept that. Receive it like a child. You can't fight it. You don't ration it out. You don't reject it. You just have to accept the fact that you're holy, holy, holy. And when you walk around the earth and you walk around heaven, you're holy, holy, holy. He's a king. You're a king. He's a priest. You're a priest. He's a son. You're a son. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in you bodily. All glory is given to him, he gave it to you. All power and authority is given to him, he gave it to you. He's the light of the world, you're the light of the world. And on and on and on it goes. He's raised and seed in heavenly places, you're raised and seed in heavenly places. You are Christ on earth. In Christ, you're Christ. Christ in you is you. You're one being. If any man be in Christ, he's one spirit with the Lord. That's it. You're one spirit with the Lord. That's what you are. One spirit with the Lord. There's not Chris's gas tank and the Jesus gas tank spirit. And I pull from one or the other. I've only got one gas tank. I've only got one spirit. And that spirit is Christ's spirit, which is my spirit, which is Christ's spirit. I've got a friend, and he loves healing and raising from the dead. And he loves telling people, I healed that person. Or oh, I raise that person from the dead. He just leaves it. People start to freak out. 
Yeah, I heal people. I heal people all the time. Doesn't say in Jesus' name. Nothing. I heal people. I raise people from the dead. I heal cancer. That's what I do. Because someone will always say, don't you mean Jesus heals cancer? He says, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> don't you mean God raises from the dead? Yeah, that's what I said. I raise from the dead. Humility is agreeing with God. It's a great and precious gift that you've been given. You can only receive it. How much more Bible reading and fasting will you have to do to become a fully manifest son of God on earth? <laughs> exactly. Because you can't do it. So stop it. Stop doing it to become something that you already are. Because you'll be running on the treadmill to achieve something that's already been given to you. There's a favorite meme. There's, there's this website. I should have got it. It's called Why My Child Is Crying. And people take pictures of their kids when they're crying. <laughs> like when they're having a dance. Like, <gasps> and they post it on the net <laughs> forever. And they say, why my child is crying? And my favorite one is this baby. He's got a banana. And he's screaming, crying. <laughs> he goes, my child is crying because he wants me to give him a banana. But he's holding a banana. He's like, I want a banana. I want a banana. That's us. That's the church. That's us. Why my child is crying. God. <laughs> Posting. <laughs> my child is crying because they want salvation. They'll be healed, body, soul, and spirit. They want my approval. They want my acceptance. They want to know I love them. They want something from heaven. But everything you need for life and godliness, being like God, has, past tense, been given, past tense, to you. So you got it. You got the banana. Yeah? Everything you need for life and godliness has been given to you. How do you access this amazing thing? Through his good and precious promises. You believe him. That's it. That's it. No flesh, no effort. It has been given to you. Now you can read the Bible to unpack and unwrap these gifts. Or fasting helps you. You fast to release what's already been given to you. But fasting gets you nothing. But it does release what's within you. Fasting's a rest. Christian fasting. Religious fasting, any religious fasting, is to get something. Yep. But you've got to fast and fast and fast and fast and fast for your Mercedes. Mercedes comes. Ah. <sighs> I don't even want to eat. But you can now have to fast for the insurance and the petrol. <laughs> I have a friend who used to fast to perform miracles. And he fasts and fasts and fasts for 40 days and he came out and he performed some great miracles. And then the anointing began to wane. He's like, what now? Do I fast another 40 days? Because that's what you have to do if you're trying to get something. But everything for life and godliness has been given to you. Every spiritual blessing in heaven has been given to you. That's Christianity. We get Christianity from the Bible. Not from our experience, not from church, not what's been framed up for us. But what the Bible says. And it's better than you think. You have to surrender under the great greatness of what's been given to us. This exceedingly great thing that's been given to us. It's exceedingly great. God made us Him. One with Him. Now, I'm not saying that we are Yahweh that created us. I'm saying that the rhinoceros has a baby rhinoceros. That baby rhinoceros is 100% rhino. It's all rhino. There's nothing else in it. If rhinos have a rhino, it's all rhino. If God has a son, in substance, it's God. It's divine. It's love. It's light. It's spirit. That's what's been given to you. Which is why Jesus could say, you will do what I can do and greater. That's why he said, be perfect like your father is perfect. Because that's your DNA. It's your natural self. The Sermon on the Mount is not a list of things to achieve, to impress God or become a good Christian. The Sermon on the Mount describes you. What you are. 
but you are born again. Because Jesus is describing the kingdom, and the kingdom looks like God. Because it's been his for millennia. It looks exactly like him. It looks exactly like him. You look like your father. When Jesus describes the kingdom to our natural flesh, it's really offensive. Everyone gets paid the full day's wage. What? <laughs> Break under the goodness of that story. God is exceedingly good to everyone. The Seven on Mount, if you read it, describes your true nature. So you'll be like your Father in heaven. And Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, if you do these things, you'll be like your Father in heaven, who sends rain on the good and the evil. And that's what you're becoming. You're becoming someone who sends rain on the good and the evil, so you can run his kingdom. If you will do what God will do with his assets, you can have them. If you won't do what he would do with those assets, even though they're yours by inheritance, you can't have them. Because you'll break them and you'll hurt yourself and hurt other people, and by love you can't have them. You might have two sons. One loves your word and will do what you say, even when you're absent. And he can have the car, because he will do with the car what you do with the car. He won't do anything silly with it, because he respects you. You paid for it. You have another son who just does his own thing. Both sons, both loved. Second son can't get the car. Still loved. Can't have it. It's the same thing. So how do we get the car? We become like our father, our DNA, whether our DNA grew up into perfection. If a baby is born, it's got ten fingers and ten toes and two eyes and ears and all those things, it's perfect, it's perfect, it's perfect. And that's what lots of the grace gospel people said. You're perfect, so don't change. But you're perfect, the baby's perfect, and now it needs to grow up so you can inherit and look after the father's assets. Why? So it can be good to others. God wants to give you everything he has so that you can be good to others in the exact same way he's good to other people. He sends rain on the good and the evil. Which means he doesn't judge. There's a judgment coming. That's his problem at the end of the day. Now, in this dispensation, we be good. We send rain on the good and evil. Which means you can't measure. So if you're going by your earthly assets, you've only got 10 bucks. I've only got 10 bucks, and this guy runs an orphanage, and this guy runs a brothel. I'm not giving it to this guy. But God might. God loves this dude. You don't know why he's running a brothel. God does. If you had his life, you probably wouldn't have done that well. He's probably made a lot of overcoming decisions to run a brothel. <laughs> he might be the most caring pimp in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone red. That's revelation. <laughs> Woof, revelation. You don't know. You might have a business. And you have a big breakthrough, you make a million rand profit in your first year. You say, God, I want to give this to you. This is the first fruits. And God says, yes, I want you to go down to the uh, Homosexual Advocacy League and give them the million rand so that they can buy um, new mattresses for their, their hospice where all their guys are dying of AIDS. But I, I, how about I give it to the church, we build a new building, we do an outreach. No, no, no. I want you to do that. Oh, I'm going to do that and I'm going to say, um, this is from the church and this is from Jesus. No, no, just buy them the mattresses. How about John 3.16? No, no, no. Just buy them the mattresses. But God... These people are trying to destroy our, our Christian church and our school and trying to, they're taking us to court over this and they're doing all these other things. Yeah, yeah. But there's 20 guys who are dying of AIDS and they've got terrible mattresses. They may never choose me, but I want their last 
five months to be on a good mattress. Will you please just go and give them the million rand? You just be like the father who's good to all. The church age is building the church, which is us first them contingency. And because we use that judgment, the same judgment is used against us. It's amongst the church where us first them. We sow and we reap. On this era, we sow and we reap. Or you can be like your father in heaven who's saving creation. He's saving the world. He's saving ISIS. He could lay his life down for ISIS. In fact, he did. When I preach this in America, I say, did you pray for Obama? God did. Are you like your father in heaven? You didn't pray for Obama? Well, you can't have what he has. You won't do with it what he would do with it. You'd go there and smash him. There's churches that are just waiting for judgment. Come on. I'm not sitting. My life sucks. I'm behaving really well and they're doing whatever they want. Smash them, God. Put that whole east coast into the ocean. Sometimes they worship, but in their hearts they're going, in the sea, in the sea, in the sea, in the sea. <laughs> and that same judgment is used against them. They had gone to that court. That's the court they appealed to. We appeal to the call of heaven, where God says, I forgive you of the big debt. Forgive the small debt. Everything on earth is a small debt as compared to the cosmic crime. Will you become like your Father in heaven? Because your DNA, you're already perfect. The spirits of just men made perfect. You are already perfect. You're born again from an incorruptible seed. The same seed that Jesus is born from. If two babies are born from the same seed, they're twins. You are Jesus' twin, but he was the firstborn, so he has preeminence. And that's it. You're a king, he's a king, he's the king of kings. You're the king he's kings of. But you're both the same kings of the same lineage. You're both priests in the order of Melchizedek, if you choose to be. It's your choice. So we've had a very little thing framed up for us about behavior and attendance. You'll leave it all behind. I say, if you come to this church, you've made a decision to leave these things behind. Since you've made this choice, you may as well go all for it <laughs> and become a fully manifest son of God on earth. We need to reclaim that title because some, some people used that in the 40s and went crazy. That doesn't matter. The correction for abuse is not no use, it's correct use. Yep. There's been a lot of excess in every area. That doesn't matter. Just be who you is. If you ain't who you is, you is who you ain't. You're welcome. <laughs> Just be who you are. And you become a son of God. Every child is going to go the way that they should go. You become it. It's going to be very different. Very, very different. But if you say, Father, I trust you because by the promises, I trust your character. And I ask now, I'm in. I want you to make me a fully manifest son of God on earth. I want to become a mature son that would do with your assets that I would that I want to do with your assets what you would do with your assets. Your word, your name, your glory. And you say that to him, then it's on. And all you have to do is stay believing. Because staying believing is keeping that seed in the ground. It's a mystery how the kingdom grows. Jesus preached the kingdom. Not even the new, Jesus didn't preach the new covenant. He preached the kingdom. After the new covenant's finished, the kingdom's going to keep going. The new covenant's a covenant. It's very good. It's a much superior covenant. There's many covenants in Scripture. And we're in a very, 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 very good one, the new covenant. Yep. Yep. But there's another covenant coming, another reality covenant coming. While we are yet sons, what we will become, we do not know. So we're there in Scripture. Yep. More than we can ask or imagine. Because in this paradigm, we don't even have the reference point to imagine. So asking your chihuahua, what's Paris like? It's got no reference point. Huh? That's us. Okay? We don't have a reference point for the goodness of God. Except in our memory. Deep memory. That's what we came from. It's in us. 
There's something yearning for a city we haven't seen. Will you go on that sojourn? Will you leave the house of your mother and father, which is the house of your religion, your church, and it's your DNA, without judgment? I went to this church in Adelaide, and the pastor, Todd Weatherly, um, I think it was, it was my first Sunday, and he says, uh, next Sunday is Easter. So go to other churches. We're shutting down and just go visit any church you want and enjoy it. And please give them your money. That's what he said. And then the next weekend, we all came back. There's a small church and his wife have built this church off their own back. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is their income. This is how they live. And the next week, they said, oh, we're not taking up a collection. What we want you, want you to do, because it was a new church, he said, what I want you to do is take know the money that you're going to give to us. I want you to send it to the church you came from. Feel, how's that feel? Because maybe you're not very happy with the church you came from. Maybe you've got superior theology now and you feel a bit superior from the church you came from and you're just waiting for that theology to bear fruit so you can show them and be vindicated. You can do that by your choice, but you can't have the glory if you do that because the glory cannot be traded into the earth. Gifts can. Get a gift, it's a jacket, it's a hammer. Got a hammer, I got a prophetic gift, do what I want with it. Make money from it, I uh, don't feel good about myself, go and prophesy, feel better about myself, all those things. They're for the earth, you can trade it on the earth. What's from heaven, you cannot trade into the earth. Melchizedek's order is heaven for heaven. Ironic order is on earth our heaven supply. Melchizedek is out of heaven for heaven supply, for heaven's glory. Paul said, I saw things in heaven, I'm not going to share them. They're too precious. But if you have a ministry mindset or a vindication mindset, God gives you something, boom, bring it to earth. This is what I did. And that church tried to stop me. That religion tried to stop me. That whatever. No. If you get something from here as a free gift that humbles you, then you want to lay your life down for those people to give them the opportunity to freely choose what you have. Nelson Mandela worked out that everyone was, this, everyone was a captive. The guards were captives. He was captive. Everyone was a victim of the same situation. He's smarter than us. <laughs> when we get something great, we realize, wow, that was me. We're all captives. We're all captives. We're not going there to go show them what we've done. Hey, you tried to stop us from doing this, but now we've done it and we've got gold teeth. Okay, like whatever, whatever it is. I, don't know, I just chose that. We've got, some, we've got miracle signs and wonders. You want them to have it. You want to send rain. You want... You want, if there's an ISIS terrorist here, you'd want him, his, knee, his knee to be healed. You'd want him to be healed, yeah? But the church he came from? Nah. Because that's how we've been framed up. That's not your true nature. So I just pull off the old man like old clothes and pull on the new man that's created to be like God. Ephesians 4. Like God. You will never be greater than your teacher. It's enough that you become like him. The fullness of the stature of Christ. Which is not a power thing. It's a character thing. It's a love thing. And that's your true nature. Your true nature is love. You've got a body here that wants to live and not die of its own strength. And you've got a God up here that says die. So you can live by my strength. Is my word enough? If I said, well done, is that enough? What if you're not vindicated in this era? We don't know if Joseph's rape charges were ever dropped against him. All we know is that Moses saw it in the timeline and vindicated him. But in his lifetime, 
those charges may have never been dropped against him. <laughs> when was he vindicated? That was Joseph's problem. He wanted to reach for something with his own flesh, his own strength. When he told the baker and the wine person, before Pharaoh, remember me. Just had to put his little in there, just put his hand in there, his own flesh. God can't give him glory, the glory. The last time he says, who am I? I can't do anything. Only God can do it. Have a whole nation. God's happy to wait until you're 80. He is. He really is. If you want to be a son of God, you want to be in ministry, get out there now. Do it. But a son of God, it may take 40 years in the wilderness, like Moses. 40 years to 80? Whoa. Yeah? But God can do more in a day of eternal value than you can do in 40 years of ministry. Yeah? I'm not against ministry. I love ministry. But who's ministering? Someone from outside the curtain wanting to please God? Or a son of God? Walking the earth. The sons of God must wander the earth. Doing good and destroying the works of the devil. So when you read the Gospels, this is how it's been framed up for you. You can just see how things are framed up. You've been taught from the front. Okay, let's read this. Okay, da 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 and here's Jesus, and then Peter did this. Silly Peter, aren't we like Peter? Or there's a woman that pushed through with the faith. Now maybe you can push through with the faith. Or this person argued with Jesus and finally got what they wanted. So let's contend with Jesus and get what we want. They're all unsaved first Adams. They're not you. They've got nothing to do with you. You can behave like them in your old nature, but it's not you. There's only one person in the Gospels that's born from above. There's only one Son of God there. That's Jesus, who's your prototype, your Lord, your older brother, your very image. So when you read the Gospels, there's only one person you can relate to. It's Jesus. You're not the woman who has to push through the crowd to get her miracle. It's not you. You're the person they touch. You receive that by believing. You want to fast for it, fast release it. You want to read the Bible, read it to, to unwrap your gift. <laughs> You're not doubting Thomas. <laughs> You're Christ. That's the world. That's unsaved people without the Holy Spirit, not born again, reacting to a son of God on the earth. <laughs> You are everything that he is. You are nothing that he is not. As a free gift, you are born again. It's your new nature. The same way you are born into Adam. And you just got what he got. There's no way out of it. You are born again. You get what you get. But you choose this because choice is your love. There are two trees in the forest. Knowledge of good and evil is reaching with your own hand to do what you discern to be right. The tree of life is believing the invisible word. His character. But if you question his character, is God really good to you? If you question that, you will do something in your own strength. The stillness on watching God's deliverance is the toughest thing. Well, it doesn't mean don't act. Sometimes God says, right, go now. But that's, that's by the Spirit. It's not reaching with your own hand. You would see what God will do with a group of people that say that he is enough and that he will make me into him because he is the author and finisher of your faith. He causes you to will and act according to his good purpose. Salvation was his idea. From before the creation was his idea. It's not new to him. It's very clear how it works. A farmer has a field. He sows seed. He's either rejected or accepted. And if it's accepted, it yields 30, 60, or 100. And 30, 60, 100 is just on how good you say God is. That's all it is. What does it mean? Does it mean that, wow, the gospel is so good that Jesus took away my sins and that one day I'll see him in heaven? That's how good. That's a 30-fold return, and 30-fold is very good. You're loved. It's amazing. You're a son. 
Or is God so good that he'd send his Holy Spirit and I now can do the works of Jesus and have aspects of his nature on earth? And you go around healing people or preaching the word or getting salvation. <laughs> That's 60 fold. That's a very good return. You're saying he's better. These people are saying God is good. He's not as good to, as to let me perform miracles. He's not that good. They set a limit by their own words. Or I can receive the Holy Spirit. And I can perform things with this jacket, this anointing, heaven supply comes to earth. Or a hundredfold, you can say, I have received the very nature of Christ and I am him now. As he is, so am I now on the earth. Thank you. So, 60-fold, for example, love spiritual warfare. And it's accurate. And they're obeying God. Because wherever you set your limit, God will love you there. If you set your limit in the 30-fold, God will find a guy or a girl that says 30-fold, and he will appoint them to be your pastor or your carer or your priest. And your 30-fold will get 30-fold ministry. It will be very good. And you'll do great things together. And God's very happy with you. You do soup kitchens and you'll feed the poor and you'll do all sorts of things together. That's very good. It's for the kingdom. But you set the threefold limit. Then you'll go here, but they'll say, but God's they'll say these people, these people are crazy. That's excess. God's not that good. But he is that good. He's sending his Holy Spirit. And if you say sixty fold is where it's at, God will give you ministers and songs and worship and opportunities. And you go on mission trips and you'll see things healed and you'll get amazing breakthrough in business and favor and you'll cooperate with the anointing and the presence. Great conferences. These guys do conferences very well. They're great. I enjoy those conferences. Excellent. Good food. <laughs> yeah. Great testimonies. Yeah. Really good people. I really enjoy these. Marriage, your marriage can be changed. Your marriage can be saved. Just they believe in the goodness of God. Heaven can come to earth here. Yeah. <laughs> you tell them, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, Enoch told me that. <laughs> I'm the order of Melchizedek. That's crazy. Because that's the era to come. So death is their salvation to that goodness. Or you can say, I've died with Christ. I've risen with him. It's given to man once to die. Well, guess what? Done. Well done. It's done. You've died. Near raised the seed in heavenly places. God is this good. I am going to be a son of God and I am going to walk the earth doing good and destroying the works of the devil, becoming like my father. And in becoming like your father, you're going to come up against all your character and DNA that says, don't die, let's live. Quick, how much money do I have in the bank? What's my reputation? Because all death is fear of death. All fear is fear of death. Fear of financial death, fear of relational death, fear of opportunity death. It means disappointment. I fear disappointment. There's something, I don't know. I don't want to do it just in case it doesn't work. I can't handle that disappointment. It's just my thing. Okay? But I need to take that land. I can change that. It already has been changed. I just need to believe and keep stepping out. And a new record is formed in me. Yep, a new record is formed, a new sound. My DNA changes, and that bit of heaven comes to earth. I'm changing, I'm taking the land. I'm taking this land, my heart, my soil, my belief. I take this land. Because what is the point of all this? Well, luckily, <laughs> the Bible tells us, Romans says, Paul says, who had astounding revelations, more than he could tell us. And he stuck, he, he he narrowed himself to, I'm only going to preach the gospel. That he saw great things. Yeah. <laughs> he, he preached the gospel, Christ crucified. That's the power of God for those who believe. The gospel, good news, what's been done is the power. Nothing else. What's been done. Every move, every ministry, that's not the power of God. The power of God is believing the good news. That's the power for those who believe. Ministries for those who don't believe. It's to help you believe. If you need someone to heal you, then you don't believe. So you need someone to help you. That's fine. That's how you grow up. It's how, what God wanted for you. Ministry is a, is a great loving mercy. But ministry is temporary. Ministry is of the earth. Ministry is living on earth out of heaven supply. But the 
new, the, the new covenant is announced in Jeremiah 31. So this is where we get the term new covenant from, from Jeremiah 31. He's prophesying a new covenant's coming. A new covenant is coming. A new covenant is coming. And that's what we have. And he defines it right there. So we don't even have to ask what the new covenant is. In fact, this whole section, Jeremiah 31, is repeated in the Hebrews. The whole section. It's the old, longest Old Testament section in the New Testament. Unbroken. Because it's about new covenant. And God says, a new covenant I'm going to give to you. Two points. One, I'll remember your sin no more. We're still arguing over that. <laughs> but that's the new covenant. We can't choose what it is. This new covenant I've given you. I'll remember your sin no more. And secondly, no man will need to teach you. What? That's the new covenant. That's the new covenant. I'm here to teach you that no man needs to teach you. Because pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and apostles are given to build you into the fullness of statue of Christ. Their job is to go, hi, you don't know God in this area. I've got a free gift in this area. I didn't earn it. I've got a jacket that learns me in this area. This is how it works. But now you can get it from God. <laughs> now go to God and get it yourself. And then I stop being a, a, a prophet. I take my prophet jacket off and I go sit down. And some evangelist gives me what I need because I don't have it. I'm a, I'm a person that needs to become a son of God. But if you are happy being the evangelist, that's great. But you can't get the glory. And that's your extent. When you become a son of God. If happy being an apostle. I'm apostle Chris, apostle Chris, apostle Chris. It will tie you to the earth. If that's the limit. But I am Paul. An apostle, not Apostle Paul. Titles make you entitled. It's not right. But I am Paul, an apostle, and if you recognize my gift, then you'll benefit from it. Paul planted churches, then he implored them. He didn't control them. They owe him, he says, you owe me your salvation. But he didn't control them. He implored them, please, I urge you, in light of God's mercy, in light of the great salvation received, respond to God. Okay? Paul, an apostle, not Apostle Paul. That makes, he's very clear. Paul, an apostle, by the grace of God. You have a call on your life. We all know that. You've got angels that see the face of God. That's a, that's a sp special angel because the other angels can't see the face of God. They have to cover their faces. But you get an angel that sees the very face of God. That is a special class of angel given to humans from the moment they're conceived. You're a very special, precious being. Before you came to earth, you agreed. You can say, if you don't, you can say, I was created for. Well, you agreed to. I believe you agreed to because before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Okay. So even if you're in God's mind, a rabbi will say you exist. Okay. But everything God thinks about exists because it will exist. There's no difference. So even if God has thought about you, He knew you. He knew you. You knew Him. Okay. At the very least. At the very least. And you said, I am going to come to earth at this time and reveal the manifest wisdom of God to the earth at this time. And re revealing that manifest wisdom, that goodness, I will destroy the works of the devil. Which is to say that God isn't that good. That is, is God so good? That's all it was. God is good. All the resources of heaven, the angels, the treasure, the glory, the revelation, is sitting in heaven with your name on it. Okay, in a little room with your name on it. And God can only give it to you if you be your true sound, your true self, what you are. Because if I'm doing it as a pastor and God gives me the great revelation and glory, I will trade that into the church system. But it's not for the church system. I'm not building the church. Glory is to save creation. Trading 
the glory is bad. <laughs> King of Tyre. O oh, King of Tyre, iniquity has been found within you because of your trading. Who's the King of Tyre? Who's it talking about? Lucifer, Satan. Trading. Trading was his problem. He took revelation from God and traded it into other people to get their loyalty. Ministry, you can do that. You can do that in ministry. Take glory and trade it into the church for their loyalty or to impress man. You're not allowed to use that fire here. You're not allowed to. You can't trade the glory. Melchizedek order is heaven for heaven. And you need to know that you are loved. If, you are any, if your cup's not full running over, you need something. I need approval. I need cash. I need something to deal with my fear of disapproval or fear of no finances or fear of reputation loss. God himself must fill that cup. When he has everything that you want and everything you need, then you, know, then you know, I have him. I have what I need, him. And you're happy in that. Then he can give you the treasures of the earth. The greatest theologians in the world are, aren't known. They're not. The greatest minister in the world isn't the greatest minister in the world. The greatest minister in the world is sitting somewhere looking after her grandkids. But she knows God. And God tells her stuff. And sometimes God tells her terrible things. God will say, in three days, there's going to be an earthquake that's going to just kill 5,000 people. What do you want me to do with that? Shall I warn them? Should, no. I just want to share with you what's happening and how much it grieves me. I just want you to understand. I just want to share my heart with someone. Will you be that person? In the era to come, that person can have 10 cities. They're trustworthy. They will do with what, with what God has the way he would do with it. But if you're in ministry and you hear that there's going to be an earthquake in five days, you want to prophesy it just so you get the record of it. Trade it into the earth, loyalty. Okay? I'm talking about, you know how I'm talking about ministry as opposed to a son of God that just reveals his character. So all of creation has been subject to frustration by him, by God, not by Adam, not by sin, by him, by God. So it's yearning and crying and groaning for the sons of God to be manifested on the earth. That's us. All of creation, not building a church, all of creation, Andromeda, dust, Carrots. It's all waiting for us to stand up and be our true self. Ministry will never do this. You understand, believing that you are a son of God and letting that baby grow into a, a full mature adult. A baby, even though it owns a whole estate while it's young, is under tutors and governors. Okay? So I'm not a fully manifest son of God on earth at the moment. So I'm under tutors and governors. I listen to Justin. I listen to the seven spirits. They're growing me up. They're my tutors and governors and royalty. So I can take over the whole estate. He wants to give you the kingdom. The Father delights to give you the kingdom, it says in Luke Luke 6, I believe. He delights to give you the kingdom. He delights in the prosperity of the saints. But where you're at is what you can have. Yeah. If you stay here, trade like crazy because it's on earth. It's for earth and get treasure in heaven. It's all about treasure, 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 treasure. But you can be in the outer court. You can be the biggest house put in the outer court. Yep. But better is one day in the house of the Lord than a thousand days elsewhere. I'd rather be a street sweeper here than a king here. Yep. Better to have the worst seat in first class than the best seat in business class. <laughs> It's a picture. It's not very Christian, that picture, but because not classes. You know what I'm saying? It's better to be a doorman in the house of the Lord. It's better to be in heaven with the lowest job than the greatest apostle the world has ever seen. Or you can be a son of God 
and you can be the greatest apostle the world's ever seen. Yeah, that's okay. But that's coming down. It's who does it? Spiritual warfare is great, but who's doing it is the question. You're doing it from here. You've got to work really hard. Or, as he is, so are you on the earth. You step in, find your eyes, sword in your mouth, long white hair, golden girdle, brass feet, because as he is, so are you. You're the scariest thing in the room. With a word. Stop it. Spiritual warfare. Work done. Back to enjoying Jesus' face. No flesh will inherit the kingdom. Five hours of this surely includes some flesh. Surely. And you know it includes flesh because if it doesn't work, you're going to condemnation. If it does work, you're going to pride. But here, it's face to face to face to face. It's face to gift. Your son's in the house. You're not working in the field. You're not running, not working in the field. You're not running away. You're in the house. Enjoying the house, house, house. And dad comes in and says, today, the house is doing this. And you go do that. Today, the house is enjoying creation. Today, the house work is to destroy that spiritual structure over a whole nation. Same. Same, same. So easy. Paul didn't do prayer walks around Ephesus. Didn't do spiritual mapping. He walked in as the sun. And whatever evil you've heard that could possibly be done in this place here and the blood and all that shed from it, it's not as near as bad as what they're doing in Ephesus. That was done all publicly. No spiritual warfare. Walked in as the sun. By believing. It's only by belief. You can't fast for it. You can't work for it. You can't pray for it. You can't be anointed for it, except the anointed one within you. Curry Blake was given by prophecy the ministry of John G. Lake. By prophecy. He prophesied Curry Blake's birth, uh, his near death, his character, the year it would happen. John G. Lake prophesied Curry Blake, there's a man coming, give him a ministry to. If you go to Curry Blake and you say, oh, do you have John G. Lake's anointing, his mantle? He goes, I don't know. I don't care. I've got Christ. Which is John G. Lake's revelation. <laughs> he doesn't care. I've got Christ. You want know someone's double portion? If they've got a double portion, they should be living in it. <laughs> Which means you get the full portion. I don't know. You have the fullness of the stature of Christ. By the foolishness of preaching, the word goes out. This is the seed. It goes in the good soil. You get 30, 60, 100 fold. How does it come? How does this happen? Well, it's a mystery the kingdom. The farmer sows a seed. He goes to bed. He wakes up and it's grown. What's Sleep in scripture, rest, death, die to yourself, get up in the morning, and the kingdom grows. It's a gift that must be received. There's nothing you can do. No flesh will inherit the glory. The high priest was not allowed to sweat before he stepped into heaven. Not allowed to sweat. No sweat. No effort. It's the foolishness of preaching. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step into heaven because you're already there. You raise the seed in heavenly places and we're just giving our body and our soul permission because something's been framed up for us that we're here on earth and God's in heaven, which is an Old Testament psalm and we sing it. Not good. You're framing it up. Lord, send revival. It says, I'm outside the curtain. You're a God in heaven. Here am I on earth. It says, you're outside the curtain. Create me a clean heart and restore right spirit within me. Take not from me your Holy Spirit. Is a great Old Testament prayer. We sing it. We love it. God, do not shut the heavens. Restore your works in our day. God, you do it. God's saying, no. 
You do it. I gave the earth to you. The heaven belongs to God and the earth belongs to man. Everything you're asking God to do, he's asking you to do. And you can keep asking him, asking him, asking him, and finally he might give it to you, but you stay a baby. <laughs> or you grow up so you can take responsibility for other people. That's maturity. So you give up your life and your assets for others, people who don't deserve it, like your father. That's your journey. So if you so choose, and it is a choice because love is a choice. You got when they're going to heaven, and we're going to step in, holy, holy, holy. That's what we are. Kings, priests, fully clothed. When they, We'll step in, bang, Melchizedek clothes. If you choose to, by receiving it, you say, okay, I'm going to receive that. Then it's yours. It's given. It's a gift. You might be a baby in it and go grow up into it. It doesn't mean you go around smashing the nations. You either grow into your authority. If God gave you the authority now, you'd probably trade it. For reputation. Look what we did. <clears throat> Things shift in the nations and no one knows why. Phew, that was lucky. One person you've never met. Some koi sand dude with his goats did that. You will never know him. But heaven knows him. He doesn't want to trade into the earth. You got nothing. He's got his goat. He's got his family. You see the stars? He's happy. And God can give him everything. He won't trade it on the earth. One day God will take this guy and say, can you smash that please? Everything the church is saying, God, come and smash that. He doesn't do it. He got one of his sons to do it. Could have been you, but you're too busy asking him. Immaturity is God. Why the earthquakes? Maturity is Chris. Why the earthquakes? Immaturity is, God, why is there poverty? Why is there disease? Why is there suffering on the earth? Maturity is, Chris, why is there poverty and suffering in, on the earth? It's your bedroom. I gave it to you. If you stop asking God to do what he's already done for you and stop asking God to do what he wants you to do, your prayer life is over. It's over. What are you going to ask God for? Because everything you're asking for, he's already given to you. And he wants you to do it. So here's your prayer. God, help me to be you. Grow me up into your son. That I can free creation from its suffering. Man from its sin. Creation from its suffering. Because it's yearning for you. The sons of God. And it says in that verse, to receive the same salvation you have. If your salvation is one day I'll be in heaven, that's what the tree gets. That's what the sun gets. That's what the ladybug beetles get. That's what the rhino gets. If your salvation is, I can get aspects of God's nature in gifts and anointings and present them at certain times, that's what the tree gets. You only give away what you've got, giving your salvation. I've taken the seed form of man and it's going to become a fully glorified being of its full potential. That's what the tree gets. That's not a tree. That's a tree in potential. That's not a tree. That's a tree in its seed form, not yet glorified, suffering from subjection by God and man in his sin. We can take both those things off it and then we'll see a glorified tree. A glorified tree will clap its hands. That is freaky. Yeah, the rocks will cry out. That's freaky. It's waiting for us. Don't look to organic avocado and say, "Bring me health," because organic avocado is looking at you and saying, "Release me from this subject of frustration." You're the Christ you're looking for. I don't mean that in the New Age term. I mean Jesus, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of Yahweh. That guy. Virgin birth, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified under Pontius Pilate, raised on the third day. So this Father sent his Holy Spirit in his place. That guy, that Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, that is you here on the earth. You're him. Some of you live as Christ lives in you, if you so choose. So we're going to step into heaven now. 
otherwise we'll go for another hour. So please stand up. If, and you can make a choice. If you don't want this, that is okay. It really is okay. 30-fold is massive. 60-fold is massive. But something's been offered to you today. And you get this by hearing it. The word's gone out. You've changed. Already you've changed. That's how easy it is. You put yourself under a word, a seed, and you said that's good. You're going to let it remain. That's all it is. Just remembering this word and believing that's true and that God's doing it. It's his idea. You can't become a son of God by of your own effort, so don't do it. Let God do it in you, and he'll bring back everything you need for that to come on earth. So we're going to imagine we're in the temple, which had the outer court, inner court, and the holy of holies, and in between that inner court or that holy area and the most holy of holies is a curtain, and that curtain prevents man from seeing the glory going the glory. The high priest could go in, and he could go in as long as he didn't sweat. And then Jesus tore that, and now we can go in and out and find green pasture through the door of Jesus Christ. The torn body, the living curtain of the torn body of Jesus Christ. So before is that curtain, which is Jesus, which is the door, which is the torn body, which is the gate, which is the curtain. And we're going to step in. So really you're stepping into your spirit man, which is one with God, which is everywhere God is. Or you're stepping into heaven, you want to understand it that way. And it's just before you. And you're going to step in. We're going to step in as kings. Holy, holy, holy. We're just going to practice that. That's what we're going to do. So it's just step in through that vow. You can do a, a micro step forward, but you know you've gone right in that, through that vow. And through you go. And just know that you're holy, holy, holy amongst holy, holy, holy people. And you're a king amongst kings. And just know you belong here. Just practice belonging here. I belong here. This is my home. God is my home. My spirit man is my home. My spirit man and God are one thing. This is my home. I'm in my home. I belong here. Royal. Everything's done. Clear of all charges. New robes. Royalty. A new name. Honored. Amongst all the great saints. I am a great saint. Here. And we're going to take this revelation, just step back to the curtain, back into Midrand. Oh, and here we are, still those kings. And now I'm going to walk through to appear before the throne of grace in our time of need to receive help. And we're going to ask for something. Ask for your response to this message. I don't believe, help me believe. Is this true? This is definitely true. But don't say no, because you have to go around the mountain. Okay? Just if you don't believe it, just go, I'm not sure about this, God. Can you teach me yourself? Perfect. Perfect. Because everything's been framed up. We want to unframe it. We're going to step in, we're going to go right before the throne of grace with the Father. So step in again through Jesus Christ, the only door, we're not thieves, but sons. The narrow gate we come. Right before the Father. And now you pour the Father with your conscience. Clean by the blood of Christ. There's no condemnation. You've got boldness before him. You can ask him anything. That's your father. You are his DNA. He wants you to take over his kingdom. You're asking how can you take over the kingdom. It's a perfect scenario. And now, just ask the father what's on your heart. Maybe I believe your invisible word so I can be a son of God on earth. Train me, father. Assigned to me tutors and governors so I can own the whole estate because that is your heart for me. Just let that transaction go forth. Some will see, some will feel, some will perceive, some will have none of those things, but it is happening because faith is in the unseen and by faith you receive. So even if you feel nothing, it's happening right now because it's your heart's desire. You've said, yes, God, you are that good that you would give me your own DNA. It will grow into full maturity on the earth. So I can bring salvation that I have to all of creation. That's happening right now. And you represent your family line, your DNA, the generations going forward, and you also represent the generations going backwards because you can restore the desolation of the generations. For you doing this, your great-grandmother, who may have passed, can walk in the fullness of her reward. 
God is that good. Thank you, Father, for giving this to our DNA, our generations, and for me. And Father, whatever I said that I would do to reveal on the earth of your, the aspect of your character and your nature, of your manifold witness and glory and wisdom, I say yes again to that. And I ask that you mature me so I don't need it. Then, then give me everything I need to fulfill that on the earth. Thank you, Father. It's a free gift. You did that because of Jesus and my new nature. I, I receive it because the sons get from the house. And now we step back into Midrand. And that's happening. That's happening now. Angels are assigned. Things have shifted. And the way it stays if the seed remains. If you say God is good, he's going to do it. The seed remains. And the Bible says trouble comes because of the seed. A bird's going to come. And a bird's just a thought, an accusation, a word, a circumstance. The concerns of wealth in this world, they're going to come. They're going to come. They're going to come. Knowing they come is like, know the game. <laughs> there it is. And the seed remains. If the seed remains, it will give 30, 60, 100. You go to sleep, you wake up, and there's a tree. A small tree, big enough, grows to the biggest tree and give uh, shelter to the birds. Which means the angels can come and live in your life. That's pretty good. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. All right, that's it. <laughs>